we're talking about DACA, a program whose legal status is still about as fuzzy as the people it's protecting. Now I know what you're thinking, didn't the Supreme Court just rule it legal? Well no, they ruled that the Trump administration's argument for why it should be illegal was poorly thought out, which it was, and told them to go back to the drawing board to come up with a better reason, which they plan to. First, legally speaking, what is DACA? Despite sounding like a German swear word, it's actually an executive order designed to say to people who were illegally brought into the country at a young age, we're going to deport you eventually, but we're just going to hit the snooze button on that action every two years, until either you commit a felony or a future president repeals this executive order. Unfortunately, as one constitutional scholar pointed out at the time that the president passed DACA, well, the president probably can't make such sweeping decisions without Congress passing a bill. With respect to uh, the notion that I can just suspend deportations through executive order, uh, that's just not the case uh, because there are laws on the books that Congress has passed. There are enough laws on the books by Congress that are very clear in terms of how we have to enforce uh, our immigration system that for me to simply through executive order ignore those congressional mandates uh, would uh, not conform with my appropriate role as president. That didn't stop the president from, through executive order, making DACA a legal reality after a bill in congress that would have legally implemented DACA failed to pass. Throughout his administration, this executive order sat on the books unchallenged. Then came the Trump administration and then Attorney General Jeff Sessions had some thoughts on this executive order. In other words, the executive branch through DACA deliberately sought to achieve what the legislative branch specifically refused to authorize on multiple occasions. Such an open-ended circumvention of immigration laws was an unconstitutional exercise of authority by the executive branch. This entire case came down to one point that I want to emphasize with a bullhorn. The exclusive reason the administration was ending DACA is exclusively because they found it to be an unconstitutional overreach of executive branch power. As you can imagine, lawsuits piled up against this recension before Trump could even finish tweeting the word DACA. Just like that, we were off to the races. A U.S. district judge has blocked the Trump administration from rolling back DACA, at least temporarily. Basically, the district court said, come on, really? You're going to hurt all those people in the U.S. economy for the sole purpose of amending this constitutional problem? I'm not saying you can't do it, just, you know, give us a better reason than just legalese. As the injunction put it, in sum, the new administration didn't terminate DACA on policy grounds. It terminated DACA over a point of law, a pithy conclusion that the agency had exceeded its statutory and constitutional authority. Jeez, tell me what you really think. So this successful injunction left the administration with two options. A, come up with a better reason for overturning DACA and then overturn it. Or B, gather your legal staff and say, we're going to hell tonight, boys. Let's defend this reason all the way up to the Supreme Court. Guess which one they chose. The Supreme Court is hearing arguments today in a landmark case that could put nearly 700,000 young immigrants at risk of deportation. It's a choice. Now you might be wondering why anyone would pursue the path of most resistance. I mean, at this point, I'm not sure if Trump just likes spending a lot of time in court. It could be a cocktail of stubbornness and lack of thought, but there are two things people were looking for in this decision. First, if you could get the Supreme Court to say that DACA is unconstitutional, it would not only reverse Obama's DACA executive action, but it would also salt the earth for any future president who would want to restart the program without going through Congress. And second, the president would effectively be ending the program while not taking any direct responsibility for ending it. Hey, I want you in the country, but a certain chief justice, well, he's really forcing my hand on this one. Now I want to clarify the stakes of this case, because while they're not larger or smaller than what you may have heard, just different. 
The main issue before the court wasn't whether the Trump administration has the power to end DACA, because everyone agrees that it does. Instead, the question was whether the administration went about ending it in the right way. That's right, this entire fight came down to bureaucracy. Specifically, the most mundane named congressional bill in the nation's history, the Administrative Procedure Act. This act required the publishing form announcing the overturning of a policy to adequately address important factors bearing on their decision. In the end, it was concluded that man who temporarily played a lawyer on TV, Jeff Sessions, had violated the Administrative Procedures Act, so his recession of DACA was itself rescinded. The problem literally came down to paperwork. Hey Jeff Sessions, can I call you Jeff? Yeah, you didn't put the right cover on your DACA recession memo. Hmm. You get a copy of the Administrative Procedures Act? It's all laid out there. Alright, I'll forward a copy to your email. Oh, you no longer work here? Well, good luck then. Now, I could explain in mind-numbing detail the different recension memos from the Department of Homeland Security, the White House, and the Justice Department, like this decision did, but it's really boring and unnecessarily complicated. Just know that a team of high-powered lawyers scraping through all these memos couldn't tape together a document that proved any true thought or consideration when it did the decision to repeal DACA. When an agency changes course, as the DHS did here, it must be cognizant that long-standing policies may have engendered serious reliance interests. That must be taken into account. In this case, after reviewing all of the memos from that time, it was found that the decision to resend the law didn't consider repercussions or downside risks, and was in fact arbitrary and capricious. So what does that mean for DACA? The solution was for the court to send the issue back to the Department of Homeland Security, for it to reconsider, and if it wants to resend the program again, for it to offer a better explanation. Yes, now the ball is in the Department of Homeland Security's court to write a memo that rescinds DACA and acknowledges the downside risks and repercussions of such a decision in a thoughtful way. The Trump administration is already underway working on such an issue, and I think this time around they're dotting their I's and crossing their T's. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube! First, I'd like to thank my patrons for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the Supreme Court's legal arguments, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Click here for a playlist of my Supreme Court coverage, and click here for my analysis of the oral arguments from this case. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring, and give me a thumbs up if you like what you saw. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.